Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Sunday, April 21st, 2024, and it's a beautiful day here in central Oklahoma. It's been uh, two weeks since I've been out here. We've been uh, having cold weather and high winds, so I don't think there was maybe one or two good forage days the last couple of weeks. So I'm a little concerned about the bees and the amount of food they have. But uh, today what I'm going to be doing, so I have not been in, in the hives since two videos ago. Uh, so I have not been in, in the hives at all since then. I shot that other video on the giveaway and uh, congratulations to those folks on that. Uh, they should be getting contacted uh, probably tomorrow and get their hive alive. Uh, good stuff from them. It's like a $150 package of stuff for a giveaway that they did. That was pretty cool. But today what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to be looking at the splits. So on uh, March 31st, I had the little swarm in this tree right here when I had COVID. And I, I got out of here and I actually captured it and put it in that Apame nuke over there. And uh, March 31st, I uh, noted that there was a virgin queen. Uh, so I actually captured it probably a week before that. So and the other splits i did uh they were april 5th so we got to get in there and check those so that's uh four splits uh, i've done on those and the two uh donor highs we need to check for queens on those as well so it's been a little over two weeks uh on those so uh that's it let's get in there and uh, see what we find uh with that swarm should be laying by now maybe not it's it's kind of close but uh, she could be laying just fine. Uh, but what we need to find out is make sure there's queens in all of these and that they're getting mated and that they've returned and not uh, got ate by a bird or whatever. So let's get in there and uh, see if uh, these nukes panned out. Okay, here's our hive two in the Apame seven frame nuke. And this was a swarm I captured uh, prior to March 31st by probably a week and uh i checked it on the 31st and there was a virgin queen in there so a little bit of activity there i just have the one side open there because uh, i put some feet in there and i was uh, concerned about robbing in those top feeders so this one i'm pretty confident in unless that queen went out to mate and didn't make it back so if everything's good here i will probably uh, transfer this into a tin frame let them build up in that I really like these Apame nukes their main their tin frames they're a little pricey but for a nuke it's it's not too bad the uh, feed there's all gone and it's all gone here and a few black ants in there Another good thing about these type of nukes, you can uh, transfer bees in this and they can't get out. You can lock them down with those little sliders there. I'm gonna take this a little ways away from the hive and uh, shake those ants out of there. Ah, they're building some cross comb over here on the side. I wonder if I don't have seven frames in there. Let me go knock these ants out of here. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty strong there from what I can see so far. A lot of those black ants in there were dead. I guess they can't get out. Looks like we got a lot of honey here. I think I put that honey frame in there. I'm gonna start on this side and work my way towards them. Yeah, that is a full honey frame. That's left from last year in another hive that I had in the refrigerator. And I brought down here and put it in there. So anything this direction going on will be things that uh, they collected themselves. A little bit of shiny nectar there. So they're doing some foraging. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I've only got six frames in here and it's a seven frame nuke. That's why they built this out over here. <coughs> yeah, I'm still coughing. <laughs> Not much going on there. I just put that in there for them to work on in case they wanted to draw it out and, and fill it up. 
So it looks like we got three solid, two and a half solid frames of bees here. This was a little bitty swarm. It was very small. Here's uh, pollen. And I'm seeing eggs right here. Queen might be on this frame. Yeah, I see some larvae too. Which, it could be laying workers, but I don't think so. It's a good single leg pattern. There. There's some right in that area. I can't see them on the camera, but if it'll pick them up, it will. Right around that pollen. And right below it, right in there, some eggs. And then right here are some larvae. See those larvae there? So yeah, we've got us a laying queen. If I saw more than one egg in those uh, cells, I would suspect the laying worker. Oh, we've got a lot of cat brood on this next one. Yeah. Man, look at that. That is a full laid up frame. There is no laying workers in here. That's a perfect looking brood pattern there, boy. That's what I like to see. Uh, same thing on this side, except uh, there's a lot of emerging right in here. So she started in the middle laying and worked her way out and the bees in here have already emerged. Don't see her. And I think this next frame looks like it might be a food frame. No, nope, that's, that's a... It's so light colored, I thought it was honey. Full up brood pattern. Yeah, we can get them into a 10 frame. And when all these bees emerge, it's gonna be a nice strong hive and it'll be ready for the strongest part of the flow. Here's our queen. She's nice looking. Right there. And crap, I did not zoom that out. Jeez. Sorry about that. I've been shooting a lot of videos. I get a little rusty. Okay. I need to clean this up. And I need to get another frame in here. Show you what I got going here. Yeah, see all that bridge comb? They bridged it over to that frame there on the side because I had improper bee space and they started building comb in there. Should be seven frames in this, not six. And when you're in a nectar flow, they will build more comb. So let's smoke these out of here. I'm going to scrape that off. And what I'll do is I'm going to grab that frame that uh, is a fairly new frame and not a lot on it. And I'll put it on this outside for now until I can get me another one. And that's some good comb. Hopefully she's not uh, laid eggs in that. Wasted some uh, eggs. Looks like they've just started building it. Because I don't see anything in it. No larva, no eggs, no nectar. That queen probably didn't appreciate me smoking her like that. Okay. I think it was this frame right here. Yeah. That'll be good right there up against it. And we'll still keep this honey on the outside. What's bad though is they've drawn this one out real thick. So that'll mess up how they do this other frame. So I won't put it right against it. I'll give it a little bit of space. But when I get that seventh frame, it's going to have to go up against there. Yeah, so I may as well. I'll just leave it like that because I'm going to put them in a 10 frame. I'm not going to worry about it. And it wouldn't hurt 
for me to give them a little bit of uh, liquid feed on top of here. I don't have any handy or any mixed up. It'll help them uh, build up a little faster. Put a little bit of that Hive Alive uh, liquid feed in that mixture with the sugar water. Okay, let's get over to, let's see, it's going to be Hive 6 that we pull the split off of. So this hive, we pulled two splits, and we put them in an apame, and it's over there around the corner, and it's the same sort of nuke like I just went through, except I had it configured as a double and with a divider, and the way you can do that is you do three frames each, and we'll check that right after we check this. So this probably won't have a laying queen, but we might have a mature queen in here that's just not laying quite yet let's see what we find and i did leave the honey super on there just because i doubt there's anything done to this super because we really uh, took the population down so if i need this super in another area it would be easier for me easy for me to just move this one because they're not going to do anything with it this year more than likely yeah very few bees up in this I'm going to use this lid for a hive stand since my stand's around the corner. They're a little grumpy. I want to give them just a little bit of smoke. So the population doesn't look too bad. Of course, they had quite a bit of brood in there. I left them. And I believe I left two queen cells in here. So they got a two cells, twice as much chance of being successful. I thought it looked pretty good there at the top, but now after I've pulled that excluder off of there, I don't think we have a very strong population in here. So we may not have been successful on this. So that's a blank frame. Looks like it needs, eh, it's got wax on it. A lot of drones on that frame. Bunch of drones on there. So there's pollen here and bee bread, which means they're mixing the pollen with some honey. And that's what they feed uh, the young larva. <clears throat> Maybe we'll see some brood on this frame here or some, uh, some larva. So this is nectar and got us a pollen ring. So what happened likely was this is where there was brood and it's emerged out since we made the split. And they're back filling it with some nectar. So this hive is good as far as food. We don't have to worry about it starving. Here's some uh, empty queen cups. I think these next three frames is gonna be all the bees. It's not real strong. Okay, this frame looks basically identical to that other one. I like what I'm seeing here. So I've got a bunch of empty cells that are kind of shiny, like they're preparing it for a queen about to lay. I don't see eggs. So the fact that they're not putting nectar right there and they're keeping that cleaned out, it looks to me like they're getting that ready for a queen. And this is all nectar and pollen. I'm looking for the queen cells. I don't see them. There's a cup. May have been right here. There were two right together, if I remember right. Right there's where I'm thinking our queen, two queens were at. That's a that's an empty cup. They never did put anything in. That's just some bridge comb, wonky comb. I don't see a queen anywhere though. When you're looking for queens like this, you don't want to smoke your hive real strong because the queen will run off to a frame that's out on the outside or down on the bottom. <clears throat> I try to do it without any smoke at all, but I remember when I did that split on this one, it got a little testy. So I hit him with a little bit of smoke there just in case. Okay, 
Let's go to hive number, let's see, 18 over there. That's a split I did from hive, I think 28 around the corner. Okay, this split you did not see me do on video. I did this one right after I ended that video there with uh, hive number six. So yeah, I'm happy about that hive too. You know, uh, swarms, they always do good. They're just full of energy. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen a swarm fail. Well, I have some little, real little bitty swarms. If you look back at my playlist, I got some, some uh, playlists called The Tiny Swarm. <laughs> I've done two or three of them. And it's those late summer swarms. Uh, some people call them suicide swarms because there's no time for them to build up. So it's kind of fun to kind of nurse those uh, through summer, into summer, into fall, and into winter and see if you can actually get them to survive. Most of the time, they're just too small. But I'll combine them with other small hives like that to see if I can get them through. Just some bees out here, a little bit of nectar right there on the outside. So this is a five frame split. Okay, this is a what I called an, <coughs> an artificial swarm. So the original queen, I pulled her out into this. So I really don't even need to check this because I know there was a queen in it. Uh, sometimes they'll supersede the queen. Yeah, so this is laid up with, uh, I see uh, a few capped larvae and eggs to the outside. So she's in here laying doing her thing they got some blank frames on the outside so they're not crowded yeah so they can work on this before they feel like they're crowded and need to swarm again so this prevented that queen from swarming and i created another hive so this is basically a split with the original queen and uh, i call those artificial swarm because when you pull that queen out of her hive and take away all those resources and all that uh, population of being crowded, she loses that urge to swarm. And you make sure that you don't have any swarm cells when you pull in here too, when you, when you do this split like this, because you don't want another queen showing up. So we'll make a note on that. Uh, it's queen right. All right, let's get around the corner here. Do this uh, double nuke. Now this double nuke is the one that came out of hive six there. The one we didn't find a queen in. So each one of these sides of this has had queen cells. So I gave these brood and pollen and nectar and each had a queen cell. I'm seeing bees coming and going out the left I hadn't seen any on the right side yet, though. Well, let's get in there. So there's two hives in here, essentially split by a divider board down the middle. Whoa, lots of black ants. These black ants are mean, too. They will haul off the larvae right out of the cells. I've seen them do that before. So this is probably full of them in here. There's a few. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this away and dump those. That looks good. So I'm gonna do one side at a time. So good thing about these Apame hives is they're so well sealed up, those black ants can't get into this hive. They have to come through the front door or down through the top of that feeder so these splits, I tried to give them a lot of brood so they'd be strong. So I see uh, pollen here. A little bit of nectar right in here. So they're doing okay as far as food stores. Hopefully we'll see a queen on this frame here. Nothing there. Don't see a queen. So 
So I'm not seeing any nectar in this in this uh, hive. A little bit on that first frame, but there's pollen and bee bread. No nectar. That side's totally empty. Oh, here's some nectar up here. So they're not starving out, but they could sure use some. But I didn't see a queen at all. So in this configuration, if one side fails and the other doesn't, you can uh, just pull the divider out. Taking one more look for a queen. Oh, I see one. I believe she's mated too. She looks nice. Where'd she go? No, oh, right there. There she is. Right center of the frame. She's just hanging there, not moving. They kind of got her covered up. All right, let's get this back in here. So it wouldn't hurt to feed them some, but I sure hate to with those ants the way they are. All right, let's get this side covered up. We'll go into the next side. And nope, it's failed. Looks like the ants might have got to it. I don't know what that is. Looks like little pieces of bees, maybe. So yeah, this is the one that was failing, so there's a lot of drone in there. So looks like our queens emerged. Got open queen, open queen. Ah, these bees starved. Yeah, I, the bottom's full of dead. So that time when there was forage, no forage, it got cold. And I did put some feed on there, but I should have come back and hit them again. See the bee butts? So that means there was a cluster there. There was nothing left for them to eat to survive on. So these, that's what happened to that side. Well, that's a bummer and uh, bad on me. I said not have time to get out here and take care of them, you know. Just so much going on. There's a lot of dead bees down here. I could just open this up, but I don't think this side is ready and strong enough to clean this up. So I'm just going to kind of do it by hand. Show you what I'm looking at down there. That'll focus. There it goes. Yeah, see, that was all covered with bees and I scraped it down to there. So they just, they die and they fall off. That's what happened. Uh, they just starved out when it got cold. And it was raining. And when it wasn't cold and rainy, the wind was blowing. Gusts up to 40. The bees that did go out and try to forage, you'd see them trying to get back in the hive. <laughs> They're just going all over the place. So you want to get these out of there because it's uh, rotting bee bodies and it attracts pests. And it stinks after a while. When it starts getting hot, you don't want that in the hive because that's full of uh, unemerged uh, bees right there. So that's going to rot and be stinky. So I'm just going to take these out. All right, we've got uh, one more down there and one donor hive to check. Okay, here's our donor hive number 28. It was a beast. And it's got two supers on it, so I'll do that last. But uh, that one newt that we checked around the corner that we didn't find the queen, that's from that hive. And this is the other split. So let's get in here. All right, this is split on Hive 35 from Hive 28. And about an hour and a half ago, 
bees were just boiling out of that hive right there. This is the first day they've been able to get out. And they each, each hive that was fairly strong took turns. They just boiled out the front. <laughs> I thought they were swarming, but they didn't gather up and make a swarm. They just were coming out, flying around, orient, orienting and uh, doing cleansing flights. They're probably all out foraging right now. It's uh, 61 degrees and the sun's setting, so it's gonna start cooling off. So it's a little chilly. So I put this spacer on this one because there were queen cells sticking up off of the frames and I wanted to make sure I didn't smash them with this nuclear that fits flush. So they may have built some comb up in here. No telling. And that spacer was from a feeder. <laughs> That's why there's wire on it. And those cells I think may be right there. We'll see what it looks like. They're a little fidgety. So with those emerged, we can take this off of here now. Not a lot of bees. They may be hungry. Yeah, those are queen cells right there. I can see they've chewed them off. They're, they're cleaning them up. So we've had at least two queen, or at least one queen emerge. The other, it may have taken out the other queen. Empty. Nectar and bee bread. So they're not starving out. But they don't have a lot. And they're competing with all these other hives with their little weak population. So it wouldn't hurt to uh, put a top feeder on this, give them a little bit. So I will mix up some feed and get out here this evening, get some feed on them. Here's some uh, leftover emerging brood. There's another queen cell chewed off right there. So that one was killed by another queen. A little bit of nectar around in here. There's a lot of shiny nectar right there. So they're actually doing pretty good. But it wouldn't hurt them to give them a little bit of food. Not a whole bunch, just enough to get them started and uh, consume and not let the ants get a bunch of it and attract them up here. Still got brood emerging from the original queen. Here's two more queen cells chewed up right there and right there. Those kind of look like drones, but they may be emergency cells so, like the queen didn't take. I'll show you what I'm looking at. So if the queen didn't take, they may have made some emergency cells. So you can see right here is one right there. And if I had to guess, I would say that's a drone cell, but it might be an emergency queen cell. And there's another one right there. You know, it's not going to be a very big queen. So seeing what I'm seeing, I, I would expect there's a virgin queen in here. And she may be out on a mating flight right now because she hadn't been able to get out in oh, at least three or four days. Oh, there she is right there. <laughs> She's right there on the end of my thumb. She might be mated, but she's still pretty small. Let's get her back in there. Yeah, I've seen queens that size just lay up a storm. So we can take these queen cells here off now. Well, that's good. It's queen right for now anyways. We'll get a little bit of feed on there. Give them a boost. Maybe even a little piece of a pollen patty, but not much. Okay, I'm gonna make my notes here that this, this is queen right, uh, possibly mated. Uh, so based on what I see here that came from Hive 28 right there, I'm not gonna go into Hive 28 now, it's pointless. Uh, if I saw brood in here, then I would go in Hive 28 because I would know, well, I should see brood over there now. But to go in Hive 28, a double deep with two honey supers on it, uh, I'm not gonna, go in there looking for a virgin queen that's that's just pointless so 
I'll go in there when I'll, I can just look for brood. When I see brood, I know it's good and I get out. So I don't even have to see that queen. But uh, I do like to mark my queens, but uh, sometimes the timing's just not right. And you, just, you just don't mess with it. So I'm going to spend the rest of my evening, I'm going to go mix up some uh, Hive Alive liquid feed with some 50-50 uh, and uh, get on this nuke, the other nuke that you saw over there, and the two Apamaze. So that'll take care of them and give them a little bit of boost. So that's it. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't and subscribe to my channel if you would. I appreciate it. Uh, we're over 12,000 now. So we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.